S-Log2 was really intimidating for me even though I've been shooting with a Sony mirrorless camera for 3 years now. So let me start Premiere and let me show you how I work with S-Log2 now. So here is the clip I'm going to work on. It was shot with my Sony A7S Mark II at 4K 25 frames per second. I have not overexposed the shot by two stops and later in the video I will tell you how I am setting the exposure for S-Log, but now let's get back to the Premiere. We are going to use three adjustment layers. So I will create one and then I will make two duplicates. Now I will rename the first layer to log to rec 709. Then I will rename the second layer to color correction and the third layer to color grade. So I will grab the first adjustment layer and place it right above the clip. Here we are going to transform the log footage into rec 709 gamma. Now I will switch to the color panel and I will go to the creative tab. Here I will go to look, browse and I will navigate to the utility lot. The idea here in this step is to get rid of that flat look and get back that contrast and saturation. I could play around with it and do it manually but there are some utility lots out there which will help you with that. In this step you will not get a color corrected or color graded image. Try to understand this step as a starting point for your color correction and color grading. I have to mention that this utility lot was made by Becky and Chris and I'm pretty sure that you know who they are, but if not I will leave a link down in the description of this video to their channel. There is also an official Sony utility lot for converting log footage into Rec. 709 space but I have better results with this utility lot made by Becky and Chris. I will select the size 25 lot. And this is how the converted image looks like. Here is before and here is after. Let's move now on to the second step which is color correction. Once again I will place the adjustment layer above my clip and above the first adjustment layer. This layer will serve me to correct the image in terms of white balance, contrast, saturation and also skin tones. Let's start with the RGB curves. I will create two points on this line. One in the middle and one in the shadows area. Now I will slowly drag these points down to add more contrast. This looks pretty ok to me but I will check the RGB parade in Lumetri scopes to make sure that I'm not crushing the shadows too much. We are not clipping so it should be ok. Next I'm going to check skin tones in the HSL secondary tab. First of all I will select reds because skin tones should fall into this spectrum. Then I will turn on the grey mask so I will see which parts of the shot I'm affecting. I can basically modify everything that is not covered with grey color. There are some parts here which are not grayed out so I will need to adjust the mask settings a little bit. This is pretty much ok. Now I will denoise and blur the mask so it will not have hard edges. With the mask turned on, let's take a look at the vector scope. It shows you the hue and saturation of the selected area. Skin tones should fall here on this line. Mine are looking pretty good. If you need, you can modify the hue of the skin tones with the tint slider. If I move the slider to the right, the skin is more pink or magenta and if I move it to the left, the skin becomes green. So you have to be really careful and make only subtle changes because it can really hurt your image. I might boost the saturation a little bit here. The last step in color correction for me is desaturating the blacks and the whites. Let me move back to the curves. 
especially luma versus saturation curve. I like to keep blacks black and whites white in this step. This way you can get rid of any unwanted tint in the shadows or in highlights. You can add it back later, but it will not interfere with your artistic decision. The final step is color grading, where I am going to add a certain look, certain style to the image. I will use the third and the last adjustment layer. Let's start here with color wheels. I like to start with adding a little bit of blue or teal into my shadows. But be careful, you don't want to overdo this, it's all about those subtle changes. Then I will move the mids a little bit to the orange side to maintain correct skin tones. And finally, let's move again to curves. This time I will be adjusting separate RGB channels and I will start with the red channel. I will start by taking out a little bit of reds from the shadows. I will do the same with the blue channel. Now the skin looks a little bit green to me, so I will take out some greens from the mids. And now let me do some final tweaks with the contrast. So here is the final look. Let me show you what each layer did to the image. The first layer transformed the lock image into the REC709 space. Then there is the color correction layer. Here I have adjusted contrast and a little bit of skin tones. The better you will capture the image in camera, the less work you will have to do here. So don't forget to nail the exposure and white balance. And finally the color grading. This will totally depend on your preferences. I prefer this kind of subtle and more natural look for my videos, but you can definitely go harder. Now, how to expose for S-Log2? Many people say that you have to overexpose by two stops. I don't have that good experiences with that, however, well, at least in this studio environment. I personally like to expose for skin tones or for whatever is your main object. I have loaded the conversion LUT into my Atomos Shinobi external monitor, so I could see how the image will look like after conversion. Then I just made sure that my object is not overexposed or underexposed. If you don't have any external monitor where you can load LUTs, just use the built-in Gamma Display Assist feature in your Sony mirrorless camera. Well, that's it for today, guys. I really hope that this video was helpful for you, and if you like it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you will get notified whenever I post new videos and I will see you next time. Take care.